Hi everybody, my name's Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition, and welcome to April's Monthly Roundup, the video where I tell you about the games I've been playing, the changes to my collection, and some other related paraphernalia. Let's go! So by the time you're watching this video, it's probably already May, and I'll probably still be wondering where all of April went to. I don't know what happened, this month just disappeared in the blink of an eye. And I had so many things to do, and all the time is just disappearing. But hello and welcome. Um, for those of you who have been here before, welcome back, it's lovely to have you. And for those uninitiated, this is the video where I talk about board games, specifically the ones I've gotten, the ones I've traded for, and the ones I've been playing. Um, you don't have to listen to this entire video, it's probably my most lengthiest and personal one. Um, I've added timestamps, so if you want to hop between um, what I think about the different games, you can just click on the stuff below. And if you make it all the way to the end, I do a little bit where I just kind of chat about myself and the channel, if anybody's interested in that. But you know, I don't expect anybody to be interested in that really, um, but some of you are. Um, and the first thing I want to say is thank you for all the lovely messages you guys sent me last month. Um, last month's video was a bit about, I suppose, being burnt out on something you love, right? And the amount of people who just send me really nice messages to say, you know, don't put pressure on yourself. You don't have to make things um, when you don't want to, you know, make things as you enjoy them. And I really, really appreciate that. So thank you all. And um, you'd be glad to know things are definitely on the upswing this month, although my board game collection is not going to reflect much of that. Um, I've been very, very busy um, prepping some review copies for Kickstarters and things like that. So while I've been working away behind the scenes, you're not seeing any of it on the channel. Um, but that's about to change soon enough. But I do have some exciting games that have landed, so we may as well start straight into the, the new games of the section. So we're going to start this one off with a game I said I really, really wanted last month, and I got very, very lucky with this. Um, so this is Bullet Heart, I suppose. It's like it's a little heart symbol after the name from Level 99 Games. And if those of you who have been here before will know, I'm a big fan of their titles. Their games are always over the top, they're a little bit extreme, there's a lot to them, um, but they're really fun and rewarding, I think so anyway. So when Bullet, like, would I just call it Bullet? I'll just call it Bullet, um, came from Kickstarter recently, I really regretted that I hadn't backed it. Because when I looked at the original Kickstarter, I was like, it looks like another fighting combo kind of game. And I'm like, well, we have one of those, and so it's called Battlecon, and it's also from the same company. So why would I need a similar game? Um, what I didn't realise about this, um, and for those of you who don't know, it's very like an arcade game. So Bullet is a dueling game where it's you versus an opponent. You can actually play it cooperatively, cooperatively as well, which um, I liked a lot. I thought that was interesting. In, and you play as these cool kick-ass female characters and basically you're drawing tiles from a bag down into a grid. Like, a little like if anyone ever played columns, you put the gems down in the rows and then you want to match them up in sets to make them explode and disappear off your board and you can add them to your opponent's board. So it's very much like one of those arcade games. You're watching all the different symbols drop down in the different rows and you're hoping that, you know, you're not going to get shot by a bullet by it reaching all the way to the bottom. So, of course, when I saw everyone else opening up their Kickstarter copies, I had that instant regret. I really, really wished I had a copy. And to buy one from their store in the States has very prohibitive shipping. Um, so it seemed kind of impossible that we might get one. Um, and a funny story, um, I don't know, I think I'm just lucky sometimes when it comes to games, but um, I'm a part of a role-playing group. Um, I'm sure many of you role play, right? And we normally play um, of an evening during the week. And our role playing session ran kind of late, much later than normal. And I was really, really annoyed about it at the time because I was tired, it had been a long day. But as it turned out, by staying up extra late, I managed to notice someone selling their copy um, on a, like a trade group or sales group. And I got right in there first. Um, so I'm delighted with myself. I would never have seen that post had I not stayed up so late role playing. So you can see why it's worth your while staying up late role playing. There are rewards. So as it turned out, um, I managed to get a deluxe copy of Bullet um, before my friend even got his Kickstarter copy, which I thought was pretty harsh actually and very unfair. Um, but yeah, so Bullet arrived. It is a lot of colour. Um, I have the deluxe version, so I have these big clunky tokens in a bag. And the first game we played was hard. I found it really hard to try and 
place all of the pieces because you can you play this in real time apparently um i don't know how anyone would do that like for our first game it said you know you don't have to play with the timer so we didn't play with the timer thank god um but i was taking forever with my turns trying to map out perfectly where everything should go so i wouldn't die but we had a blast it was really fun and it was the first game ever i said i'd really like to try and play this solo because it really just felt like having an opponent interfered with my whole puzzle solving ability so this is the first game i've played solo in a really long time i want to say like three years maybe more um since i tried playing viticulture um and i was very impressed with the solo mode it is definitely a puzzle game now what do i think about it um i really liked it i think you have to like it's, it definitely feels like one of those match three games that you would play online and i'm the sort of person who has played bejeweled and gyromancer um and all those fun matching games um i like those from time to time and this captures all of those feelings um so i really liked it a lot all your characters are unique they're special abilities you know the usual kind of yada yada um but yeah i had an awful lot of fun with it and it actually it really lived up to my expectations if not exceeded them just a little bit um so yeah i'm totally happy with that all right so on to the next so game number two has a really interesting story behind it. Um, so I hope you don't mind having a bit of story time with me. Um, so the game is Catacombs of Karak. And this came all the way from the Czech Republic. And how this happened is, is well, there is another board game inquisition. Did you know this? Yes, there is a group of people who make a podcast about, well, board games, of course. Um, and they um, decided that they wanted to send me a surprise which I thought was absolutely lovely, but also a little scary because I didn't really know anybody and they just came straight out and was like, can we have your address? And I'm like, what for? A little bit baffling. Um, but they decided they wanted to send me something in the post and I didn't know what it was. Um, so I waited and we waited and we there was no sign of the box. So we decided eventually after about, must have been nine months that the box was missing. And so he went about seeing where the post had gone and put in a claim, of course, for the, the missing items. And I get a call here in Ireland asking me, do I know what was in the box that was supposed to be delivered, that was delivered to me? And I was like, I don't, I didn't get a delivery. I don't know what's in the box. It was a surprise. Um, so I thought this was kind of the end of the whole thing and I never got to find out what it was. It was all a bit of a mystery. And then out of the blue during the month, a very battered box shows up and inside is Catacombs of Karak and a bunch of really cute, lovely, like little gifts as well. Um, so that was just, what an amazing surprise, right? That I finally made it here after all this time. And I was quickly informed that this game, Catacombs of Karak, is a very, very popular game in the Czech Republic. Um, and it's one which lots and lots of families play together. So looking at the box, it's definitely like you look at it and it feels kind of like a family weight game. And it is a dungeon crawler. It's, a, it's a, like a beginner's dungeon crawler. Um, and so you would think maybe, okay, I'm not super interested in that, but I love kind of how it was put together, right? It has recessed player boards. Ooh. Um, and there were dungeon tiles that you would build out and you and your character would go around. You have special abilities. You have to kill, you know, monsters until you get to where the, the boss is revealed and then you'll take them down. So, you know, a little a little kind of like, you know, it's familiar, okay? So we, but we sat down to play it uh, that I'd arrived. I was just, I was just so kind of, curious about it and to be fair we had a blast playing it i have to say it's one of the best rule books i've ever read it was an outstanding rule book for such a you know i suppose a family weight game i wasn't expecting all of that clarity it was very good i really liked the character i played and sure it was a lot of dice rolling and running around but we really really loved it um and they were so kind to send it to me um, so like yeah I really like I really liked it if you want to get your your kids I suppose into dungeoneering early if you're kind of building them up to Gloomhaven or whatever I think this is a great place to start it was really fun and just really pleasant to play um, so if you haven't heard it before look at me recommending a family weight game I think that's a, that's a new thing for me but yeah I really really enjoyed that and what a lovely lovely surprise right like that's amazing I love that story okay so those are the two new games I got this month. It's short, isn't it? I know. I'm running out of stuff to, to pick up, I suppose. Now, the good news is I have a bunch of review copies woo, that I'm working my way through um, that you'll be hearing more about later, but I may as well, I may as well tell you what they were. Um, so the first big thing that arrived, and I'm, I'm very proud to say that this got here, is um, a copy of Oath. Um, from later games. Um, so as you guys may know, um, I have a little 
I don't know, I have a fractured relationship with Root um, from later games. And that's simply because I didn't like it and then tried it again and then really liked it. So Oath, um, for those of you who don't know, see, I still haven't played it. It's really, it's, the problem is a bunch of things have arrived just before I've made this video. So I can tell you they exist, but not much more. But anyway, so um, Oath is a game where there seem to be three different types of factions and they all have different ways to win. Does this sound familiar? And it is an action selection game where you're taking two actions on your turn to try and um, work towards whatever goal the case may be. It's not exactly a legacy game, but it does have that kind of component where the game changes based on who won the previous game. Um, so, so far I have opened it and it comes in a very large box, like much bigger than I had anticipated. It has a game mat instead of a board, which I thought was very classy. Of course, it's got some adorable looking meeples and things and there are, everyone has lovely player boards with beautiful art. Um, and there is like a little leather bound journal to keep track of your chronicles. So it's really impressive upon the, the open. Um, so from what I've, I've seen kind of with people um, on the internet with it so far, a lot of people are having problems with the rules. Um, and that sounds like an asymmetric game problem. Um, I feel the same way about Root. The rule book you see has everything in it but not in an order in perhaps you'd want to learn it. As in the rule book's only good once you already know how to play. Um, I have a feeling the same is going to be the case here. That's kind of how they do their rule books and their style. And I think those uninitiated with this type of game will might struggle um, to try and put it together. Now, it doesn't mean it's impossible. Um, doesn't mean you can't you can't do it or you can't try. So I'm looking forward. I think our first our first game will be this weekend. I'm pretty sure we're just going to sit down and plow through everything and work everything out. You know that first game always takes longer. Um, but I'm super excited to see what it holds. It re it really looks something special. Um, and knowing how much I like Root, I kind of expect this to be just as special. So yeah, that's pretty great. Um, the second thing that um arrived is Dice of Dragons. Um, so this is from Thing 12 Games and some time ago I reviewed or at least did a playthrough I believe was for Dice of Pirates which is another game in their series. So these are mint tin games where you are rolling dice um, and in this case it's a cooperative game. Yeah, I know, a cooperative game out of a tin in which you and your compadres are trying to take gold from a dragon. Um, there's a lot of dice rolling, absolutely. Um, it comes in a very small package. It's very nicely put together and I've been playing a lot of it because um, it's got a Kickstarter coming up soon. I'll put the tape below. Um, I like this a lot. I think this is a super intelligent game, albeit maybe a little on the long side for my tastes, but it, I just think it's so clever. And I think that like the best thing about this is, so the dragon has a pile of gold. When the dragon runs out of gold, um, you the dragon loses because they've no hit, hit points. The gold counts as their hit points. So when you steal their gold, it counts as your hit points. See what I mean? So if you are to get hit and lose your gold, well, the dragon regains some hit points. And I think this is super, super smart. Um, I've not played anything quite like it and my review for that will be coming out soon. I haven't recorded them actually ahead of myself for once. Um, so that is Dice of Dragons. The other two things to arrive came together and this is also um, a long distance package. So these two came from Japan um, and I have two little games that seem like wallet games. Um, they come in a beautiful bag, I'll put the picture up here. Um, and so the first one of these is Reach, which is a game about um, basically you have to get somebody back inside your spaceship who has gone outside in space. Very cool. And the second game, I want to remember the title because it's got an ink at the end, is Ka <laughs> I'm having a bad day, Kazayaki Inc. Um, and this is a game about sequencing like DNA. So yet again, have, they're all here so soon. I haven't had a chance to get to these yet. I'm rushed off my feet. Um, but these are beautifully produced, okay? Because there's something, I don't know, there's something about the way you open it that just made me go, ooh. So they came in a little bag and then you take out, it seems kind of like a wallet, but you open it up at the back and then you fold out this piece of paper and all the rules are on the piece of paper and all the components are inside. Um, and both of these are low player count games. Um, one is for two players only and one is for one to two. Um, so I think that's kind of cool and they seem quite small. Um, I'm looking forward to giving those a go. It's been a while since I've had something like that. So I'm dying to show you more, they're beautifully made. Um, have I anything else on my list? That's all the review copies. Although it seems to be a busy time of year. People are getting ready for Kickstarters and things like that. So. Um, there's going to be more of those coming up. I'd really love to know what convinces you to check out a Kickstarter for a game you've never heard of before or would you watch a video for a game that you didn't know about? 
Um, I'm always a little perplexed about that as a reviewer. So, you know, if I post up a review for um, a game that everybody already knows, it's infinitely more popular than games you don't know. Um, do people not want to discover new games? I, I don't know. I find it odd. I find it a little odd, but I just, hmm. there must be reasons, reasons I don't know. But I think the short and long of it comes down to the fact that I would like more people to discover more games um, and not just the, the big brand ones. Um, and so I think sometimes you'd be amazed what you might find that's lesser known. Who knows? So yeah, that's my preaching of the month. So we'll jump into the next section where I'll tell you about the games I've been playing. And of course, I've forgotten about the trade section because it's normally so small or non-existent. I, I kind of hop over it. Um, but there is something for trade this month and I got myself a copy of Smartphone Inc. Um, so this is one I've had my eye on for quite a while actually, um, so I'm super excited to try it out. It seems to be a kind of economic -y planning kind of game, which is of course based around smartphones. <laughs> um, I'll report back with more about that next month. But um, yeah, I just didn't get to play as many games as I would have liked this month, or everything I did play um, is for review, so you'll hear about that later. But I just don't know where this month has gone. And I'm trying very hard not to be apologetic about the fact I haven't played as many board games as I would like. But yeah, it does feel a little bit like that, doesn't it? Because th these are almost like accountab accountability videos at some point or another. Here's what I have achieved. Um, but no, less board games this month, but more than the previous month. Um, so obviously I've played a bit of Bullet, um, but we already talked about that. The other thing I have been playing quite a bit of and um, I definitely want to talk about is the It's a Wonderful World expansion. Um, so this is kind of like, um, not quite a legacy, like a campaign expansion. So it's one where you reveal things, you open up things based on what's happened. Um, so It's a Wonderful World is a game I'm a really big fan of. Um, as you might know, it is the, I don't want to say the ultimate tableau builder, but it's really close to that for me, in which you are managing your resources. Um, What's it about? It's, a, it's about trying to like advance your technology faster than your rival, but really it's about making cubes and allocation cubes to cards so you can make further cubes. Um, I, you know, <laughs> it's got some lovely art despite lacking in theme. Um, but it's a game we play a lot of. So this expansion then, um, basically what it does is it adds something different for eight games. So the first game we opened up, you know, an envelope and we got to put this thing into play and use that for our, as part of playing the game as normal. Um, then the second game, there was something else revealed and later on there was, depending on outcomes, different things were revealed. Um, and so far, so interesting. Um, my big problem with it is, is that the cool thing you get, right, to play with, because obviously I don't want to spoil it for anybody, um, you get to play with for one game. So you just feel like, well, I did anyway, that you're just getting a hold on it. And you're like, ooh, this is cool. I can't wait to try this again. And then it goes and you, you have something new and exciting to deal with. If anything, it squeezes too much, I think, in too short a space of time because games of this don't take particularly long to play. Um, there are some things that stay around from game to game, but I kind of wish you had more time to explore all the fun stuff than, you know, rushing along. Um, I think how it's taken it is interesting. So it's basically, you know, um, adding new cards or cards you can have in your deck or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and well, see, I like I like the base game a lot. So this is just more of, you know, the good stuff um, with a little bit of that. Ooh, what's in that envelope or what's in that booster pack um, suggestion? So, yeah, if you like the base game, I think you should like this. Um, I'm, I'm, I assume you get to use the cards at the end as part of your original game. I'm not entirely certain about that. Um, but yeah, any excuse to play more It's a Wonderful World, I'm kind of I'm kind of down with it. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I found that one really, really fun. Um, what else have we been playing? So as we know, I've been having a bit of a dry spell when it comes to playing board games. For a while, I just didn't feel like I could play anything at all, which is why I want to talk about this particular game. Um, and this is Potion Explosion. I'm sure maybe you know it well. If you don't, here's your, here's your opportunity. Because I found it interesting that when I finally felt like playing board games again, this was the first game I wanted to play. So Potion Explosion is this colorful extravaganza 
where now whether people want to call them balls or marbles I, I don't know you have a, a rack full of um, balls or marbles and you're trying to connect the colors so that you can make explosions take the balls onto your board and fill out your potions with ingredients that's the the basic concept um it's kind of like i suppose yeah i do kind of like um puzzle games but there's something i think very special about potion explosion which combines the physicality of the game and what it's like to touch and feel it and move things around with the puzzle you're also trying to solve and i think it marries it so incredibly well um you know this is one of those times where components um really maximize gameplay like you can see it a lot these days in all sorts of games where people are adding in minis and all sorts of you know extras or whatever to try and enhance the game but really it's the same game under it all whereas this is really made better by all of the pieces and it's one of those really relaxing games that I'm quite happy to sit down and mull over um, while you're trying to kind of like you know figure it out with touching the things it's got a good, good one and I gotta ask you guys you know what's that what's your go-to game um, I'm kind of surprised that mine was Potion Explosion. Yeah, I'm a little baffled by that myself, to be honest, but just when, you know, if you could sit down and play anything and you'd never say no to it, it, it it's probably this one. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I must not apologize for playing fewer games. I must not apologize for playing fewer games. I must not apologize for playing fewer games. Um, yeah, so while I've not played as many games as I would like to this month, I've been playing review copies, so you know, there's no point in telling you about them now when there's a whole review coming. Um, it doesn't mean that next month, month's monthly roundup should be sufficiently uh, well padded out and slightly more interesting than this one. Okay, so you've made it this far, you've heard about what I've been up to. Um, so the personal bit comes next if you actually want to hear any of that. Literally just sitting here wondering if there's a point in putting in a monthly roundup when it's basically a list of here's the games I've got that I've not played yet. <laughs> I don't know, maybe maybe you wanted to hear that stuff anyway. Um yeah, welcome to the, the final bit of the episode. Um so you'd be glad to hear that um things are on the up and up from last month. It took me a little while to kind of get my feet back on the ground and I'm getting back into things slowly. Um but I do have a lot of things going on. There's a lot of Kickstarters getting ready right now. Is this just the time of year for it? And I just didn't notice. Possibly. So um, I have a bunch of those coming up and I put a lot of effort into them, especially when you don't feel like playing games, but that's somebody's games. You want to give it the best you can. Um, but it just took a lot of effort, I suppose, on my part to get there more than normal. But um, yeah, I, I, ho I hope they look good and I hope you'll, you'll check out their games. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like, I suppose... Um, I've taken up a new hobby. I have started painting miniatures because I think last month I was saying about how I'm playing games with miniatures. Yes, I'm, I'm still playing some War Machine, but now I've started painting the models in my spare time. That's been kind of nice, actually. Um, it's odd having a hobby that isn't just board games, isn't it? Oh, I think it's a little odd, but I'm getting into the groove for it. And it's kind of nice having something nicely painted at the, the end of the day, isn't it? Um, so I've been having fun with that. And I found an awesome way to store my paints, which was super exciting. Ooh. Um, and I want to say that kind of the games I'm getting for review have really given me a bit of a boost of confidence, I guess. Um, because you know, you just sometimes you wonder, you know, do, is who is this for? Um, is is it interesting enough? You know, does anybody want to hear what I have to say? And I try very hard to think about this in terms of I just want to make things. And if somebody finds it useful, well, that's exactly what I'm here for. Because that's, that's what I'm all about. I think I'm all about the, the use value. Um, and I always want to make everything the best I can do it. It's genuinely difficult for me to sit here and tell you about all the games I've got, but not that I've been playing games. <laughs> Um, I don't know why that's so difficult. I don't know if you're, you're willing to just hear about the stuff I've gotten, even though I haven't, you know, gotten around to playing it yet. So there's no insight on it till next month, I suppose. Um, but I'd like to tell myself I make these videos for me, but that's not entirely true. But still. Um, okay, so a couple of things to do with this month. Um, so the first is that the Tabletop Inquisition has a new podcast out. And this is a really, really good one because it was horrible and hard, but came out really well, I think. Um, and so this is games you can play in 30 minutes or less. 
and so far it seems to be going down pretty well. Um, and not only are we, you know, myself and Oliver are telling you about the games we would play, um, we're definitely getting you to play along at home and we want to hear everyone else's recommendations for, we have a, a, set, a bunch of categories that we want you to answer under. So it's a little bit like playing board game bingo. Um, but yeah, I really, really love that episode and hopefully we will continue on the series, um, with, you know, under an hour or less. Um, and we'll see how that goes, <laughs> goes later. But if you want to check it out, um, just go to tabletopinquisition.com. We have loads of episodes. Um, so that's always exciting. What else has been happening? I'm going to let you in a secret. And I was debating whether I was going to or not. Um, I'm like, do you ever just feel like you're trying to center yourself on something or come into your own on something? I've been working on Board Game Inquisition now for over, I think it's three years, isn't it? I think it's three years, or close to three years. I can't even keep track of this anymore. I think it's three years. Um, and when I set it up, I had very different ideas about what it would be like, um, what I would do, um, and the kind of message I was trying to send out. And I've been giving some serious um, consideration to rebranding the channel. Mostly because I feel like I've moved on from that, but also because I feel like my title isn't the most welcoming. When I originally came up with Board Game Inquisition, I was making a pun on the Monty Python sketch about no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. And the funny thing about that sketch is the Inquisition were normally people, you know, who did terrible things and um, tortured people for information and heretics and all that kind of stuff. But the Spanish Inquisition in the Monty Python sketch do the complete opposite where they threaten people with the comfy chair and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I, I really like that idea of, I wanted to talk about board games in a way where I questioned them, absolutely. Um, Cause that's my background as a philosopher. And I still feel like I do that with my, my five things. Um, but I think the word inquisition just gives off a, a bit of a, a bad vibe that I hadn't intended um, or that I didn't maybe see fully till much later. Like, I don't know, I think if you're looking down a list of things to click on, does Board Game Inquisition pop out at you? Probably not. I think, if anything, it's a little standoffish and probably not as welcoming as I would like to be. Like, I feel like I'm trying to... What, what I'm trying to do these days is... <laughs> let me to explain, or to illustrate, which is... Did you hear about this game? This is the most amazing thing. Oh my God, I can't wait to show it to you. So, you know, I was like, have you done this bit and this? But oh my God, did you get to that bit? It was so good, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what I feel like my job here is about. Um, and that's what I want to do. I want to tell you about the really great games um, I've been playing or I've come across or I'm reviewing and help you make some of your own decisions about, you know, what games you want to play or what you want in your collection. Um, and you can see a lot of that is there when I started out. I've always focused on that collection bit because that's what I, I think some of the, the important part of board gaming is. It's some, you know, you own a board game and you own an experience. And I want you to have really, really great ones. <laughs> and I want you to be able to make your own decisions about them. I don't want to be the person going, you should buy this, this is amazing, every la 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 la. I want to be able to tell you, I liked it because it did this. It also did this and I didn't like that, but maybe you will. And that's, you know, that's all fine. But um, I think I'm settling a little bit more into the role um, <laughs> of old man at the fireside, as I fondly call it. I do love my fire. Um, I always like the idea of kind of gather around next to the fire and let me tell you a story about board games. Um, you know, and that's a little bit less aggressive than an um, Inquisition, I suppose. Um, so hopefully, you know, that makes sense to people. Um, I'm so, you know, and I'm trying... I have some things in the works for that, so maybe I'll have some reveals soon in the future, but that's kind of where my head is at. I kind of, I want to make everything a bit more my own and make it sustainable because I couldn't help but wonder how long I would do this for. You know, would I still be here in 10 years doing this? I'd really like to think I would. Um, I think I'm in a bit of a unique position compared to most people who are content creators where I have a lot of time um, and I can, do this, I suppose, in a way that others don't get the chance. Um, you know, I'm, I'm unable to go and work. Um, and so this is this is my thing. This is my job, in a way. Um, <laughs> and what, how long would I do it for? I, I, yeah, I'd really like to think I would do it for some time, as long as there are good games to, to share with you guys. And I want to make it sustainable, and I want to make it a happy place, and I want to make it something 
that I can always do. Um, so yeah, so this is where I, I am at in things. Um, because I think when you start out creating, you know, for, for board games, you want to cover all the best things. You want to make as much stuff as possible. You want to really grab people and, and make connections and all that kind of stuff. And of course, those are great things. Um, but for me, this is a little different than most. Um, am I trying to make a career out of this? Not particularly, no. Um, I would love to be involved in the board game industry, sure, somehow. And I'm very lucky to be working with Ryan Games. Um, but nothing ma like nothing major. I think this is my corner of the world where I'm just going to tell people my discoveries. And I want to wear it like an old coat. So I'm working my way up to that. It's funny how long it's taken me to think about these things, isn't it? But that's what you get when you take a bit of a break. I was like, why am I doing this? Why do I want to do this? What will it look like in another while? Um, and hopefully, hopefully that bit of space, I think, has done me good. So yeah, what do you think about the Inquisition um, as, a, as a title? Yeah, I'm not a fan the more I think back on it. Although I really love my logo. I would miss that red hat. But um, have things, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about things. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it all. Um, and actually, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think my channel kind of is about or what kind of vibe I give off because, you know, you're the ones out there listening. <laughs> um, so input is super appreciated. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what's been happening. Um, hopefully next month will be a little bit more well-rounded than this and I'll have some videos actually published because it's been a very funny couple of weeks or so. Um, but yeah, thank you for hanging out with me. I want to hear about what you've been up to over the past month as always. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, roll on May. Oh my God, May. How soon? How soon? I'm not the only one, right, who thinks time is just literally disappearing. I'm pretty sure COVID eats time. But yeah. All right, everybody. Till next month. I'll see you then. And of course, you know, you can catch me on the usual social media places. Come say hi. I usually reply. Um, and yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.